Hey, what's going on guys? So the other day I posted a video, it was actually a YouTube short where I was just talking about Kamala Harris versus Tulsi Gabbard. And I saw some of the comments, a couple of people were saying that they either couldn't watch the short or they were trying to find the, the full debate, they couldn't find it. Um, so I just found it here, it's, it's from Daily Wire. Uh, they actually posted this video a few years ago. Um, now there are other videos of these two debating, but they're more subtle. Where this one, uh, this is the one I was talking about, where Tulsi Gabbard just kind of really shreds Kamala Harris's policies and her lies right to her face, right in front of everybody, right on national TV. So um, for those of you who couldn't see it, or for those who didn't want to just hear me talk about it, but to actually see it for yourselves, I have the video right here and we're going to play it. It's only four minutes and then we'll talk about it a little bit after. I want to bring the conversation back to the broken criminal justice system that is disproportionately negatively impacting black and brown people all across this country today. Now, Senator Harris says she's proud of her record as a prosecutor and that she'll be a prosecutor president, but I'm deeply concerned about this record. There are too many examples to cite, but she put over 1,500 people in jail for marijuana violations and then laughed about it when she was asked if she ever smoked marijuana. Whoops. She blocked evidence. She blocked evidence that would have freed an innocent man from death row until the courts forced her to do so. Whoops. She kept people in prison beyond their sentences to use them as cheap labor for the state of California. Whoops. And she fought to keep cash you, bail system in place that impacts poor people in the worst kind of way. Thank you, Congresswoman. Whoops. Senator Harris, your response. That was beautiful. As the elected Attorney General of California, I did the work of significantly reforming the criminal justice system of a state of 40 million people, which became a national model for the work that needs to be done. And I am proud of that work. And I am proud of making a decision to not just give fancy speeches or be in a legislative body and give speeches on the floor, but actually doing the work of being in the position to use the power that I had to reform a system that is badly in need of reform. That is why we created initiatives that were about re-entering former offenders and getting them counseling. The bottom line is, Senator Harris, when you were in a position to make a difference and an impact in these people's lives, you did not. And worse yet, in the case of those who were on death row, innocent people you actually blocked evidence from being revealed that would have freed them until you were forced to do so there is no excuse for that and the people who suffered under your reign as prosecutor oh you owe them an apology correct our democratic party unfortunately is not the party that is of by and for the people it's a part it is a party that has been and continues to be influenced by the foreign policy establishment in Washington, represented by Hillary Clinton and others foreign policy, by the military industrial complex and other greedy corporate interests. Senator Harris, any response? Oh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> she shuts um, it, she's I, such I an idiot. That, um, it, it's unfortunate that we have someone on the stage who is attempting to be the Democratic nominee for President of the United States, who during the Obama administration spent four years full-time on Fox News criticizing President Obama. That's who has spent full-time, that's who has spent full-time criticizing people on this stage and, and, and is affiliated with the Democratic Party. When Donald Trump was elected, not even sworn in, buddied up to Steve Bannon to get a meeting with Donald Trump in the Trump Tower, fails to call a war criminal by what he is as a war criminal, and then spends full time during the course of this campaign, again, criticizing the Democratic Party. What we need on the stage on in November is someone who has the ability to win. And by that, we need someone on that stage who has the ability to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Donald Trump and someone who has the ability to rebuild the Obama coalition and bring the party and the nation together. I believe I am that candidate. Thank you, Senator. Uh, yes. Congresswoman Gabbard, I'll give you a chance what, to what Senator Harris is doing is unfortunately continuing to traffic in lies and smears and innuendos because she cannot challenge the substance of the argument that I'm making, the leadership and the change that I'm seeking to bring in our foreign policy, which only makes me guess that she will, as president, continue 
the status quo, continue the Bush, Clinton, Trump foreign policy of regime change wars, which is is deeply destructive. Okay, so again, you know, that, that wasn't the full debate, but I just wanted to kind of show that to you guys because, you know, it's it's a very important thing to understand that when you have someone like Kamala Harris, who the Democratic Party and the establishment likes, versus someone like Tulsi Gabbard, who the Democratic Party and the establishment hates, like, you have to understand, like, what, like why, why would they hate Tulsi Gabbard and like Kamala Harris? Kamala Harris is a cackling idiot. Tulsi Gabbard speaks the truth, and there you go. You can't talk about the military-industrial complex and expose their corruption and expect the DNC to get behind you. And let me tell you another thing. If the DNC did get behind her or Robert Kennedy Jr. to go up against Donald Trump, they would beat Donald Trump under the Democratic uh, label. Because all the blue, no matter who people, they're, they're going to vote Democrat no matter who. You're getting like 50 million votes just by being under the, the that label. Not to mention all the people who are like me who would pick Tulsi Gabbard, who would pick Robert Kennedy Jr. over Trump. That it'd be a landslide if, if the DNC just did what they should do. Well, why wouldn't they do that? Because if they hate Trump so much, why wouldn't they pick someone who could clearly beat him? Because the people who are, or at least were on the Democratic side, they can beat him. But the problem is that they're similar to him in some ways. Of course, they are way more liberal than Trump, but they tell the truth even more than Trump. That's the real problem. They want to change things. They, they don't want to see the military-industrial complex profit over the deaths of innocent people. They don't want to see companies like BlackRock and State Street and Vanguard buy up residential neighborhoods so that the middle class will never own a house, will be forever renters etc 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 the pharmaceutical industry exposing that just all the corrupt things that people complain about Tulsi Gabbard is on your side Robert Kennedy is on your side Trump is a little bit but he's still 80 90 percent establishment okay and if you don't believe that he is go back and look at who he hired to be in his cabinet just go look it up for yourself if you don't believe me and you can start with Mike Pence So this whole, you know, democratic thing, oh, we need someone to beat Trump. They had people to beat Trump. What they really need is someone to beat Trump while maintaining that 100% I'm the establishment status. Because they don't want change. They want, they want things to keep going the way they're going, where the rich keep getting rich and the poor keep getting poor. The middle class becomes poor. More people now need the government, the more control the government has. And there you have communism. American politicians used to hate communism. Now they understand how much control they get and how much more money rich people and all their buddies would get. And it's already happening. You see their, their rich friends, they own 90% of the, the wealth. And then the 3% of the wealth that's left over, we have to share all of it. While they hoard most of our money. And then donate to those politicians and the politicians will scratch their backs passing laws that favor them to help them make more money, and the cycle continues. Tulsi Gabbard wants to break it, and Robert Kennedy wants to break it. And you know, to be fair, maybe even Donald Trump, if he, if he, if he wins and then makes some smarter hires, sure. Like, for example, Trump, if you're listening, I know you're not, but if you were to ever see this and you pass up Tulsi Gabbard as your VP, big mistake. I understand a lot of people like Vivek Ramaswamy. Yeah, he's, he's not bad. I, I would agree with that. But Tulsi's the person who he needs. She could bring a, a quite a few votes over to him. There's a lot of people on the left who like Tulsi Gabbard. And she's not that conservative. But hey, you know, you have Trump, a conservative, and then his VP kind of more of like a, a left-leaning, feisty, no-nonsense type of woman. That's perfect for him because she'll go to bat for him. It's just, it's, it's, it's such a perfect pick. So I'm not sure if he's going to do that. We'll have to see. But again, guys, I just wanted to uh, show you this video. I hope you enjoy it. Hopefully there are, there's no errors when you click on it. Uh, hopefully there are, uh, 
you're allowed to see it. I'm also going to post a link to this video in the description so that if you want to watch it, I know sometimes my system's a little bit laggy, so I'll post that in the description as well so that you can watch it and then you can enjoy it for yourselves. And then uh, just make sure that you, you maybe download it and save it to your computer because I'm sure YouTube's going to take this off at some point. Uh, thanks for watching, guys, and don't forget to like and subscribe.